Hello and welcome to lesson five of uh, weather hazards and climate change. This session is going to be following on from the session we looked at last time, which were the natural causes of climate change. Um, and the logical step seems to be to now look at the human causes of climate change. So since we have roamed the earth, um, we have certainly done our bit to affect the global climate. Um, and today we're going to be looking at some of the causes um, of climate change that have been inflicted by us and our actions. So by the end of this session, and the title is there, so please write that down, the end of the session you need to know what we mean by the greenhouse effect, um, more specifically the enhanced greenhouse effect, um, but knowing how our actions have affected climate change through that enhanced greenhouse effect. Okay, so get that title written down. If you haven't yet, please pause the screen and I will move on. Right, now this is, I'm hoping, a, a diagram that you've seen or a version of this in science or in some format uh, before now because this is something which every student in the world should know and every person in the world really should be aware of. Um, but there is a bit of a, a thing that people kind of have as misconceptions. They, they hear about this thing called the greenhouse effect and they instantly jump to um, negative uh, and, and problems. And, and that's because the most well publicized greenhouse effect is the enhanced greenhouse effect. But the greenhouse effect is a naturally occurring thing um, and it's because it involves these things called greenhouse gases. Now greenhouse gases are just types of gases which um, allow um, that they're de floating around the atmosphere. They've always been there, okay, or you know, they, they, they're there, okay, they're always there, whether we're here or not, they are here. So things like carbon dioxide or CO2, um, nitrous oxide or N2O, and uh, methane or CH4, um, and those greenhouse gases um, have always been made up a part of our atmosphere and they are actually the reason that life on earth is possible. So on the left hand side you've got your natural greenhouse effect. Okay, So you've got your sun, um, obviously not to scale, and it sends in solar radiation which passes through the greenhouse gases through the atmosphere, hits the earth's surface and is absorbed. Uh, and then that light, okay, the, the um, UV light that is absorbed from the sun through solar radiation that hits the earth um, then gets what we call re-radiated. Okay, it gets um, emitted as, um, as, as heat okay? and some of it gets also reflected back off um, dust in the atmosphere and clouds and ice caps on the surface of the earth and things like that. So you know, not every bit of the solar radiation that comes through from the sun and through the atmosphere um, even makes it to the surface. Some of it bounces off well before it gets to us. But um, a lot of it will pass through, some of it will be absorbed and re-radiated, some of it will be reflected away. Now after it's re-radiated, okay, what it will do, okay, because it changes form, it then can often bounce off some of those greenhouse gases, okay, so which they're a bit like a blanket, okay, they trap the heat. Now most of the heat in a normal scenario, or a lot of it that's re-radiated, will escape into space, and some of it will bounce back, and we get a kind of a double warming, and that is really essential for life on Earth, because our climate would be a bit too cold if we didn't have that little additional re-emitted heat, okay? Um, and that's all because, and thanks to, these greenhouse gases. They are very important. So the sun, the solar radiation comes in, gets warmed up, you know, uh, it warms up the Earth's surface, some of it's re-radiated, and a bit of it bounces back in to give us a bit of extra heat, and some of it escapes into space. OK, that's natural. That's brilliant. That's what life on Earth uh, uh, needs. However, because of us, OK, the human enhanced greenhouse effect, what we're doing is we're taking this naturally occurring thing and we're making it more. OK, we're increasing it because what we are doing is we're putting a thicker duvet around us. Basically, We've, we're increasing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere because we're burning fossil fuels and we're using cars and we're all these things. So CO2 methane okay we're using more stuff you know waste disposal sites landfill nitrous oxide all of these things you know fertilizers chemicals are all things that are putting more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere than naturally would be there they'd always be there naturally you know we breathe out carbon dioxide so does all living thing every little bit living thing on earth so there's always going to be co2 in the atmosphere because there is life on earth but we're actually adding more by 
burning fossil fuels and stuff like that. So CO2 is increased. That's why this is bigger. Methane, more of that, more nitrous oxide. And this layer is thicker. Now, that layer doesn't prevent the solar radiation coming in, but what it does affect is the amount that bounces back once that heat hits the atmosphere because this atmosphere is so much thicker so you can see the big difference here between these two is only how much greenhouse gases there are but also the thickness of the arrow more of that heat is re-emitted and less of it escapes into space and that is what is creating um, the human enhanced global warming that we're seeing the effects of uh, uh, today so this is the human enhanced greenhouse effect we are enhancing the naturally occurring greenhouse effect okay so there's always been a greenhouse effect greenhouse gases occur, occur in nature you know they do and without it we would not be able to live here humans would not be able to find the earth hospitable there'd be life but much less of it but because of us okay we are trapping more of this heat in and therefore it's leading to these many negative impacts which we're going to have a look, a look at next lesson um, but today is all about learning about the enhanced greenhouse effect the human worsened greenhouse effect which is creating obviously lots of consequences all right and um, now what i'd like you to do is make sure you've got a diagram that shows at least the human enhanced greenhouse effect and i'd like you to get some notes about the difference between the natural and human enhanced greenhouse effect so i'm going to leave this or I'm, I'm going to ask you to pause the screen until you've got a good very clear for you as well diagram which just explains what the greenhouse effect is and why the human enhanced greenhouse effect is different to just the natural greenhouse effect OK, so pause the screen while you're doing that. That should take you a solid 10 minutes to do a, a proper job of. OK, and then when you're ready, you can unpause the screen and carry on with the lesson. OK, so now you've got a really good idea about what the greenhouse and the human enhanced greenhouse effect is. Um, I would like you now to consider... Um, the way in which obviously our actions as humans are increasing greenhouse gases so now we know that we are doing stuff I want you to focus on what specifically we're doing to increase those greenhouse gas emissions okay because I've got a little chain here firstly human actions the thing we're starting with think about the things that we do in human actions that lead to more greenhouse gases which then lead to global warming and climate change okay so we're looking really at the first part of this chain which leads to that human induced climate change now to help you with this there is a, a video which i'm pretty sure you you've seen at some point i think maybe re show it um but this video is saved on 365 so you can watch it it's all really um it's quite an amusing video uh, but it's a bit of a scathing um uh, kind of commentary on how humans are negatively affecting the earth and what I'd like you to do is try and work out how many of the things that we're doing there could emit more greenhouse gas emissions so could lead to more methane could lead to more uh, carbon dioxide could lead to more nitrous oxide okay um, or could make it worse and stop the earth being able to take away greenhouse gas emissions um, I, for example deforestation trees take in carbon dioxide um, if we chop down trees that prevents them from doing it and then we burn them too which releases all the carbon they store so um, watch this video which is saved on 365 uh, and try and identify ways in which human actions are increasing greenhouse gas emissions all right you won't be able to feed back your ideas you know to the class so this is just a case of watching the video and and enjoying it but also finding out um, what we're doing to destroy our planet Okay, when you finish watching that, then you can unpause the screen and um, carry on with the session. Okay, now you will also find on 365, and hopefully you've got all the information for this anyway, um, but you'll find these pie charts. Um, and pie charts, good geographical skill uh, of presenting information, sorry, is, is a pie chart. These pie charts um, show you quite a lot. There's quite a lot of detail on there. Uh, and there are four in total. The top pie chart, actually... The task is for you to try and describe what the pie charts show so what i would like you to do is with this handout i want you to annotate it and um, by now um, you should have had a, a good bit of practice about annotation but essentially i want you to pick things from one or all of the pie charts and just identify 
certain things and certain features of them. So to give you an example, okay, um, on the top one, which shows you the annual greenhouse gas, em gas emissions by sector, so all greenhouse gas emissions, every single greenhouse gas, all of them added together, um, which sectors produce the most? Now, I can see that, and luckily it's got numbers as well, the biggest piece of pie on that first pie chart, the red section, is power stations. They are responsible for 21.3%. This is one year, but 21%. So more than a fifth of all greenhouse gas emissions in this particular year came from power stations, places that generate energy. Okay, so an annotation is just stating what I can see. Power stations or energy production is the biggest single source of greenhouse gas emissions. All right, so our thirst for electricity and the way we get electricity is the biggest problem when it comes to releasing greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. That would be one annotation. So what I'd like you to do is spend a good five minutes annotating these pie charts to just identify, you know, trends, patterns, things that cause significant amounts. And don't just look at the pie charts and the colours themselves. Look at some of the other things like the percentages um, underneath the, the three pie charts at the bottom. Which one? Uh, what does that tell you? Okay. Um, and then once you've done that, after five minutes, I'm just going to take a swig of water. Once you've done that, um, after five minutes, there is an extension in the bottom right hand side of the screen, which asks you to um, think about how population increase could affect any one of those sources. It's a very obvious answer, but think about if there's more people, how could it affect any one of these things? OK, so um, pause the screen while you're doing that, please. And then when you're ready, you can unpause the screen and I can talk you through some of the little sections. OK, so hopefully you've had a good long look at your pie charts now and you've identified a few uh, tr patterns and trends. Um, and I'm going to just add a few more. So please feel free to add to your annotations if you haven't got any of these. Um, I've, I've highlighted there that 10% that um, of greenhouse gas emissions comes from actually us, um, homes and shops. And that's what those terms residential, that means homes, commercial, you know, shops and other sources mean. So really we are, you know, having over 10% of greenhouse gas emissions, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, sorry, are coming from our homes and what we do uh, at home. So turning the heating up, using our central heating more, using more uh, energy reliant devices like washing machines, dishwashers, charging our mobile phones. Um, so that's not a small proportion. It's quite a big chunk, 10%, just from our homes alone. Um, CO2, they're looking at the bottom left pie chart. Hopefully you spotted underneath it where it says carbon dioxide that actually of the big pie chart at the top, which shows all of these three things added together, CO2 actually is 72% of them. So 72% of all greenhouse gas emissions are carbon dioxide. And that's why people talk about reducing their carbon footprint, uh, CO2 measures, because it is such a big proportion of the greenhouse gas emissions that go into the atmosphere. It is something we need to be um, addressing quite significantly. Um, so hopefully you spotted that CO2 is the biggest single greenhouse gas um, that we will find released anywhere. Um, there's also another little section here which identifies this uh, farming part. Now, it, um, both the methane and the nitrous oxide uh, pie charts specifically, um, agriculture or agricultural byproducts is the biggest contributor. Um, and that's because we associate, obviously, um, uh, nitrous oxide with things like fertilizers. You know, you add nitrogen to the soil uh, and then any of that runoff or uh, atmospheric kind of uh, runoff um, will contribute to greenhouse gas emissions because as it uh, mixes with uh, oxygen you'll get nitrous oxide um, and methane um, is associated largely with actually uh, rice growing but any um, natural product as it as it degrades as it uh, decomposes releases methane into the atmosphere uh, and that's why there's a big joke about obviously methane being the fart gas okay because as food is digested in your body um, it releases methane alongside other not very nice things um, and comes out your bum as a fart now um, when you look at things like landfill as the natural products and the organic products decompose in landfill it releases methane but certain farming practices also release quite a lot of methane and, and, and rice growing in paddy fields which is that really damp 
wet, warm environment also leads to quite large amounts of methane being released into the atmosphere. So um, agriculturally speaking, uh, and also, you know, dairy cows or, or any any um, farm animals, they do a lot of pooing. Uh, and again, that releases methane to the atmosphere. So um, uh, animals and crop growing can release methane, large amounts of methane into the atmosphere. And all of that together makes uh, agriculture a producer of sort of 12 and a half percent of all of the uh, greenhouse gas emissions that are emitted from human actions. So the key thing is all of these pie charts show you human orientated greenhouse gas emissions and where they're really coming from. Now the extension section of this, how was population increase any of these sources or affect any of these sources? Um, essentially it will make all of them worse because let's just take agriculture, the one we, we finished on. Agriculture, uh, the growing of crops, if there's more people and more mouths to feed, you need more rice, you need more meat. Because So you're going to have to have, um, or not necessarily have to, sorry about the aeroplane noise in the background, um, but you're going to need um, more agriculture or more efficient agriculture, and therefore it's likely that there'll be a greater proportion of nitrous oxide and methane being released. Um, more people also means, let's take power stations, that there are more people using energy to heat homes, charge appliances, do whatever, and therefore you're going to need more power. Again, all more efficient sources of power. Now, that tends to suggest that most of these greenhouse gas emissions will increase with population. Now, that's not necessarily the case because we are far more aware of practices which can provide energy, for example, which don't produce greenhouse gas emissions. So wind energy, solar energy um, are far less polluting in terms of greenhouse gases than burning coal or burning fossil fuels. And so if we change how we produce energy, then we can also, even though we might need more because of a growing population, we can actually maybe reduce the impact or the proportion of, of greenhouse gases coming from those areas. Um, so there you go. It's, this is just, uh, you know, every one of these is a, a human um, cause of greenhouse gas emissions. You know, industry creating products, uh, you know, making goods, moving ourselves around, transportation like shipping, uh, aeroplanes, that sort of stuff, cars, um, fossil fuels, you know, getting them, processing them, moving them around, um, and then burning them in power stations. So if you add um, fossil fuels into the power stations one, then actually that makes up over 30% of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so you can see quite a large proportion of these greenhouse gas emissions. It's quite balanced, so there's no one thing that kind of uh, gets away with it. They're all things that can lead to this greenhouse gas um, surplus in the atmosphere, which leads to that enhanced greenhouse effect that we talked about at the start of the session. Um, now, the, the next part and the, the last part, really, of this session is going to require you to access page 101 of the Highland Cow textbook. Now, if that's not been uploaded to 365, next time you're in school, you're going to need to get a copy or you're going to have to email me to ask me to send you a scan or upload a scan to 365 of page 101 of the Highland Cow textbook. Uh, and that will allow you um, to complete um, the four main exam board sections that they refer to um, with regards to how we cause climate change. So through industry, through transport, through energy and through farming, and just a good summary of the ways in which we as humans add to or contribute to greenhouse gas emissions globally. And once you've completed that um, summary of these four sort of areas or for human causes of climate change on greenhouse gas emissions, um, then you will have completed this lesson. So uh, well done. Um, that's lesson five done. And I will see you next time for lesson six.